welcome to a new video from Geoscience Skills channel. I'm geologist Tajuddin Ben Isa and I will show you a new video about data quality characteristics. You remember in the past, on exam morning day during all-time school, when our mothers were preparing us to leave to school and keep praying for us to pass the exam with the high scores. They also used to tell us something very important which is to read the exam questions multiple times and understand them very well before we start answering. And why is that? Because as they know that understanding the question represents 50% of the answer. So when you are a geologist and you are involved in a project, it could be any project, either a project assigned to you by your company that you are working for or your thesis or graduation project. So what you need is data, a data that enable you to achieve the objectives and reach the results, the required results from the project. So before you start project execution or working on anything, you need to review and quality control your data. And why is that? Because as understanding the questions of the exam represent 50% of the answer, it's the same with the data of the project. So data quality represent 50% of results achievement. If the data is of good quality, then it's suitable to serve the project objectives. But if it's poor quality, then it's worth neglecting. For the data to be evaluated as good quality, hence qualified for project objectives as achievement, it needs to have some characteristics that promote the data, that promote them to be qualified or disqualified for the project. So in this video, I will go through some of these characteristics for data quality. One by one, define them, how to apply them in different reservoir studies with examples and their impacts on the results. So let's start. Data quality characteristics. For any data set to be qualified as being of good quality, it must possess some essential characteristics, including consistency, quality data, must be uniform as data values in one data set are consistent or in agreement with values in another data set. Currency. This refers to how current or up-to-date the data is. It is essentially for answering important question, which is, is the data updated or no? Integrity. Data integrity is the validity of data relationships with all its entities and it measures the structural or relational quality. In other words, it reflects correctness, validity, and completeness of data. Data completeness, it is the approach of confirming that certain attributes or variables always have assigned values in a data set. Let's take an example for data consistency. In a weight correlation, we say lithology is consistent when gamma ray log show same behavior from well to another. The consistency implies lithology similarity so that intervals of the same lithology can be traced from well to another, hence the positional environment extension across the field. Another example for data consistency in individual well, we say well logs data is consistent when all agree on the same insight and confirm one informative conclusion. In these intervals, we can see that gamma ray is low, neutron and density separation is clear, so as both heading into separate directions, indicating high, por indicating high porosity. Also, we can see that clay volume is minimal to zero. So all the logs in all these intervals indicate that these intervals are hydrocarbon bearing zones with good reservoir properties. The same can be noted in the other well. So all the log data in these intervals show good consistency, reflects good reservoir property intervals with hydrocarbon bearing. We say that core data and log data is consistent when core porosity or permeability are matched with their relative logs. On the other hand, inconsistency is used when core data is not matched with, with, with well logs as we see here. So we have a core data scattered and is not following the same pattern of 
or matching the values of the log. In such case, the erroneous data must be investigated and excluded and not to be used in the interpretation. Erroneous data is false data and is not representative to reality, so it must not be used in the reservoir studies. Now let's come to currency. Current data mean current data as we mentioned means up to date. In oil and gas industry, data involved data involved in any project or study must be updated as it represents the current status of the static or dynamic conditions. In reservoir development, let's assume that we ran PLT logging for a certain well in 2022. After 10 years, in 2032, we ran another PLT for the same well. By comparing two versions of PLTs, it's very clear that there is a significant change occurred to well production behavior in 10 years' time. The quantity of oil in green decreased compared to water quantity in red, which significantly increased in 10 years' time. So, question. Which data are more important for production behavior study and forecast analysis in case the company decided to update the production profile in 2032? Yes, it's the updated current data, which is PLT 2032, because it's the one that reflects the current production behavior and mechanism of the fluids flow inside the reservoir. So it's the one to be considered for fluid simulation model update and forecast analysis. Let's take another example. Suppose a company X discovered a field and they confirmed the presence of hydrocarbon. They drilled four appraisal wells and studied the reservoir sedimentology, which concluded that it's a classic reservoir. They extracted cores and described four faces to be used for rock typing process and building geological model. After four years, the company drilled more six development wells and they restudied the reservoir sedimentology again using cores extracted from those development wells and they ended up with six sedimentary faces instead of four. The company will use the current and updated sedimentological data to rerun rock typing process and update the static model. Why? Because these data updated our conceptual depositional model of the field. It has provided new information we didn't know from the previous study. The old data provided image about the depositional environment of the reservoir with uncertainty degree. But since we drilled more wells and obtained more data, then uncertainty of the conceptual model has decreased. Data integrity. Completeness and correctness of data is represented by data integrity. When data is complete, it provides better subsurface informative image and improves our understanding about rock nature and reservoir quality and its potential. At well scale, the more data obtained from one single well, the lower uncertainty of the results will be. So, more wells with complete data set Output uncertainty will be gradually changing from high uncertainty to low uncertainty, which enables the company to develop the field areas with lower risks and optimize with locations and exploit reserve to ultimate level. On a field scale as well, the more information obtained from different resources, such as studies, analysis, surveys collected from many wells, and surrounding areas as well as analogs, the company will be able to manage the reservoir with lower risk, develop the field as planned, keep production plateau through field life, hence increase and maintain asset value. Data correctness or validity is another data integrity parameter. Data errors would lead to wrong interpretation or false estimation of values which in turn negatively impact results robustness. If borehole conditions are poor, as caliper indicated, caving intervals, then the triple combo logs against these intervals cannot be trusted. 
they cannot be used as inputs in the interpretation process because their values are not representative for actual reservoir properties. Another example, core analysis provide key information about the petrophysics of the reservoir. If porosity and permeability was measured for broken plug or fractured during plugging plugs or damaged plugs, then these values cannot be used for reservoir property studies as they do not represent the true value of porosity and permeability of the reservoir rock, so they should be excluded because of invalidity. One more example, when core log depth shift process is done erroneously, it will locate core samples in the wrong depth of good reservoir property interval. This will lead to the wrong selection of core plugs allocated for scale analysis. Like this, we will end up with measured scale data not representative for the net pay interval or the potential reservoir interval. So core depth shift must be done correctly if we want to obtain valid and representative scale data. Geoscience skills. Thank you for keeping learning.